What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and my week has just been going great, you know. USA gets knocked out of the World Cup on Tuesday, the US uh, U-17 team has a terrible last game and ends up going from first to third in their group. Luckily they still made it, but still not a good result. Chelsea lose yesterday, Lane United tie tonight, and I got called up for jury duty. One hell of a week. So yeah, let's talk about this game because, frankly, a draw is a good result based on the performance. Um, because, frankly, New York probably should have won this game. But it's still not a good result for us. And what I mean by that is, we've not done our job up until now. We should have beaten Philadelphia, or not, well, actually we should have beaten Philadelphia too, but we should have beaten New England away. We should have beaten Minnesota at home. We didn't do either of those. We drew and then we lost. So coming into tonight, now... Columbus is one point behind us in fourth place, and then I think Chicago was three points behind us in fifth, and then New York was six, I think, behind us. So we've now let them get caught up, and on top of that, we had a chance to overtake New York City, and we haven't done that either. So we've wasted all these chances, and now we've got two difficult games away. This one is one we should be going for. You know, New York are a good team, but we're still better. We still got more quality. We still got more talent. But I just don't see the effort from some of these players, and it pisses me off. It pisses me off to see some of these players just be lazy, not try, just not give their all for the team when other players are. You know, when other players are giving their all and working their their asses off, and you know Jeff and Michael throwing themselves on the line, and then to see players like you know Joseph or Tito who just give up after they don't win the ball, and then that's it. It's really frustrating for me. So, after tonight, you know, we're in uh, fourth place now. There's a very good chance we could drop out of hosting the first round of playoffs. That's a big loss for us. I mean, just imagine that. Bringing the first round of playoffs to Mercedes-Benz. We're winning that game. <laughs> it doesn't matter who we play. We're winning that game if we bring it to Mercedes-Benz. But now we're, we put ourselves behind. We put ourselves in a situation where if we don't get a good result against Toronto, the number one team in the league, there's a very good chance we could end up in fifth or sixth. You know, we've qualified great, but we're not good on the road, and now we set ourselves in a position to where we could be on the road for the first round of playoffs and just not make it. So let's talk about the individual performances today. Um, actually, first of all, let's talk about some of the decisions by Tata later on, because frankly... I do think that's been an issue this season, has been the substitutions coming in. They've not been quality substitutions. First of all, the first sub should have happened at like the 65th minute mark. Uh, at this point, New York had started to gain some momentum. They started creating some really good chances. We had the first 10 minutes of the half, and then the rest was all New York. So you should make a sub earlier. On top of that, Kevin's a great one to bring on. He brings a lot of energy and work into the midfield. He plays a very simple game, helps us keep possession. But you don't bring him on for Joseph. That's a stupid decision. And now, at the time, Joseph hadn't been doing anything. He was really lazy the entire night. So I'm not saying he doesn't need to come off, but you're losing something up top now. And the problem is, you've kept Julian Gressel on the field. That's the issue. He doesn't provide anything. And the, the thing is, we're more defensive at this point. We're trying to defend as New York is flooding players forward. You need a player, you need to bring off a player who's not providing anything defensively for you. Joseph at least is winning the corners. You know, our our defensive corners, he wins the header about 50% of the time. So you need him out there for that. Tito is the other option that may have come off for not really helping us defensively tonight. But Julian was doing nothing for us defensively. And so I just don't understand why he's not the decision to come off, but Joseph is. So that was a weird one. And then Jacob Peterson came on, came on next for Tito. Again, not a bad decision. Tito hadn't been doing much tonight either. But Julian's still on the field. <laughs> and it wasn't until they brought on Kenwin Jones, the last sub, for like, what, three minutes, that they finally took off Julian. And I'm just like, it's way, way too long for him to be on the field and just not providing anything for us. So let's talk of individuals now. Brad Guzan kept it at a draw. <laughs> you know, that's... About all I need to say, because he made the saves, he kept us in the game. Thank you, Brad Guzon. You're a lifesaver. Um, 
Anton walks on the right. Worst game I think I've seen from him. Uh, defensively, not tracking men. He's losing track of people. He's not really providing much for us defensively. And then getting forward, which he looked like he was supposed to be maybe pushed up a little bit more. Even there, he's not really providing much. He's not connecting passes very well. His crosses in are not good enough. So, really disappointed with him tonight. Uh, it's probably the first time since he's taken over the spot from Mears that I just thought he's worthless. Um, there was that other game, uh, the the game against Orlando, where he played pretty poorly, but he still had some moments there. Tonight, he just had nothing. Uh, Michael and Perez in the middle. Michael, very, very solid tonight. Uh, <laughs> easily our best defender. You know, just very, very good, very good at reading the game, very good at making interceptions. Perez lost his head a few times tonight, and it nearly cost us. You know, making challenges on the top of the box he has no business making. Going into challenges that's going to put him at risk, risk of getting a red. You know, just stupid stuff sometimes. And he dribbles way, way, way too much. I get so nervous anytime he's on the ball because I don't know what he's going to do with it. I don't know if he's going to, you know, is he going to pass it to somebody? Is he going to dribble himself into pressure and then lose it? I never know what to expect from him. So I always get really, really nervous whenever he's on the ball. Um, and then Mikey Ambrose on the left. Very solid performance from him. Uh, I have been wanting to see him as the backup to, to Greg for a while. But Chris McCann came in and provided something going forward that Mikey couldn't bring. So he ended up taking over the spot. But now with Chris out, that means Mikey steps in. And I like him. I like him as a player. I think he's solid defensively. I think he can move the ball around pretty well. He has a good touch. I don't know why he's not getting some more game time. But hopefully, you know, tonight was a good enough performance. You know, he's... He's a little bit weak. Uh, that would probably be the the biggest criticism of him is that he's not going to be able to stand up under a challenge. You know, he's not going to be able to knock somebody off the ball. He is a little bit smaller, so that that's about it though. Yeah, everything else, the defensive part, the winning the ball, putting himself in a good position to cut off the pass, he does it all very well. So uh, I'd like to see a little bit more of him going forward. In the middle, Carlos and Jeff. Jeff, man of the match for me. You know, just the interceptions. He well, actually, no, sorry. Brad Guzan, man of the match. Jeff Lerner, field player of the match. Because, frankly, he was doing what Brad Guzan was doing, but in, on the field. You know, cutting off passes, winning balls out of the air, putting in challenges. Michael was the only other player that I thought was putting in almost as many challenges as he was. And it just, it shows. You know, it's, it's starting to show in games where we're being run over. He's showing his quality. He's showing how much he helps us in the midfield. And frankly, I don't see why you would ever move him out of the middle of the field because he just runs it for the most part. They had to start, you know, the only way that New York was able to get a lot of chances was they had to get it out wide first and then send it in. Um, because anytime they try to go through the middle, most of the time Jeff Lerinowitz is there and he's cutting off the pass. He's winning it and playing it out. So very good night for him. Uh, Carlos had his moments. He had a few really good defensive moments, but overall just... I don't know, not good enough for me. Because, like I've said before, he is a little bit wild with his challenges. Sometimes he just goes flying in when he needs to stand him up. Um, but aside from that, he just his work rate tonight was not good enough. You know, the, the work rate to get back, the work rate to win the ball and you know get out and help us on the attack, it just wasn't enough for him. There were too many times where our midfield felt like they were, it was not being blocked off. You know, it felt like they were just allowed to run right at our defense. You know, they, it, it's like, here's a guy here. Jeff has stepped in front of him. They lay it off across the middle. And instead of Carlos being there to step in and win it, he's somewhere over here. You know, it felt like he was just out of position most of the time. He wasn't in the middle where he should have been helping. And so whenever they flooded players in the middle of the field, it, there's nobody else there because Carlos is out of position. So that was my biggest gripe with him tonight. Um... Uh, going up into the, the front three behind Joseph, Yamil on the left, once again, his work rate defensively, very good. He does a very good job of getting behind the ball, helping out defensively. But my God, he needs to work on his passing. I, I swear, I want somebody to count his passes. I want somebody to you know do the percentage on his passing tonight because it had to be close to 50%. You know, and that's that's not good enough. If you're a player who's supposed to be up in the attacking third, who's supposed to be moving the ball around a lot, your passing percentage should be somewhere close to 80. You know, maybe you miss a few because you're trying some risky passes, 
but it feels like even the simple passes for him are giveaways. They're not strong enough. You know, they're too right to a defender. I don't understand how he can always misplace his pass, but it feels like he does. And so it just gets really, really frustrating to see. Um, Julian in the middle, like I said, you know, and like I've said many times, he has these moments where he looks like he can handle himself in the middle of the field. And then he has moments where you just see he doesn't have the quality. Whether it's a poor pass, whether it's he's getting body off the ball, whether it's just, you know, it should just be a simple take it down and then play it, and instead it's a he misses it, now the defender has it. It, it. There's always something. It feels like there's always something, no matter what he does, no matter what he's trying to do. You know, okay, he makes a great play to win it out of the, out of the air, but then his next touch is terrible. It feels like there's always a, oh, that was a great play, and then there's always a but, and then he does something afterwards that it just messes everything up. So my frustrations with him are still not going away, even if he is providing especially on nights like tonight where he doesn't provide, though. That's where it makes it even more frustrating to watch him. Uh, and then Tito on the right side, really, really, really frustrated with him tonight. Um, he had a few moments where he was almost through, but just chose the wrong option. And the frustration got to him, and he started playing stupid. He started going into stupid challenges. He started, you know, throwing, throwing his hands up in the air, stomping around, getting upset, not trying. I hate it whenever players do that. You're getting paid good money to go out there and play for your team, and it's all about you. It's all about you. You mess up, and you got to throw your hands up. They're not giving you the ball they want. you got to yell at them and throw your hands up and not help out defensively. Go work. Go earn your money. Don't just stand around and wait for other people to do your job for you. You go do it yourself. And on that note, same thing for Joseph. It's not about you. I get you're trying to win the golden boot. I get... You're, you're playing very well. You're trying to score. You're trying to outscore your opponents. I get that. You know, I, I understand. It, it makes sense why you'd want to win the Golden Boot, especially having played several less games than the other strikers that you're up against. But it's not about you. And so to see him tonight provide us nothing. I mean, almost, almost absolutely nothing. And then you get upset when you get subbed. I mean, I still disagree with the sub just because I thought Julian should have been the first one to come off. But in my opinion, he should have been the second. Because he provided nothing for us tonight. And then when you get subbed, you got to take forever. you got to roll down your stocks. you got to rip it off and throw it away. <laughs> rip it off and walk away. Walk away. Don't high-five anybody. Completely walk away from the midfield so you don't have to high-five the guy coming on. Don't look at your coach. Slam the chair. It's not about you. All right, it's, I understand you're a very good striker, but it's not about you. And I can't stand that attitude because I, I play on an amateur team. The guy up top for us, same exact attitude. He's got the same mindset that it's about him. If somebody pl doesn't play him the ball he wants, it doesn't matter if we scored. If he didn't get the ball he wanted, he's mad. If he gets subbed off, he's got to walk off. He's mad. It doesn't matter today. We won 3 nothing today. He got subbed off in the second half. It doesn't matter to him. He's got to walk off. He's got to be all like, I can't believe I'm getting subbed. Me, of all people. It's not about you. It's about the damn team. And tonight, we needed Joseph to step up and take this team on his shoulders and work together with Tito up there and provide something for us. But instead... He didn't provide anything. He didn't try to do anything to help us get back into the game. He was waiting for the perfect pass to him. He didn't try to help anybody else. He didn't try to get on the end of some passes that were maybe a little bit away from him. He was waiting for the perfect pass to him because he shouldn't have to work too hard to win the ball. And you know what? That mindset's going to get us crushed in the playoffs. So I hope he learns. I hope somebody can get through to him and say, hey, look, it's not about you. You know, this is a team effort. This is not just the Joseph Martinez show. But until he learns that, he's going to be that striker. You know, that striker that just, he has his moments, he has some really good games, but if the game's not going his way, he's doing absolutely nothing. Because it's all his head. It's all the attitude. Then talk about the subs that came on. Uh, Kevin came on, did pretty well in the midfield, you know, just provided a little bit more of a defensive work rate in there than Julian does. Um, this ended up pushing Julian up the field, so 
you know, we were already not really getting much help up top. We got even less help now because Julian's up there. Um, but yeah, then Jacob Peterson came on, did okay, had a few good runs, but he looked like he got worn out really, really quickly. Like he made two really fast runs and then all of a sudden we needed him to make another one and he's not making that run. So really disappointed that he didn't come on with a bit more energy. Uh, and then Kenwin came on for like three minutes and yeah, didn't have enough time to do much of anything. But, you know, like I said, we've goofed around. We've we've not done our job. We set ourselves up for this. And now we're paying the price. You know, we're paying the price for those those losses that should have been wins. We're, we're paying the price for those draws that should have been wins. We're paying the price for these home matches where we should have gotten the job done and then we didn't. You know, Minnesota, New York the first game, uh, D.C. when we played them at home. We should have gotten the job done, and then we didn't do it. And now look at where we are. You know, we have a we had a chance to be second place. We had a chance to overtake New York City. We drew. We lost at home, and now we've drawn again. And now Columbus has overtaken us for fourth or for third. And now we're in fourth. And now we're at risk of not hosting the first round of playoffs. That's frustrating. So hopefully, you know, I I'd, I'd love to be able to have the first round of playoffs at home. So. Hopefully we can go in and do the job against Toronto. It's going to be a very difficult match, but this is this is why we should have gotten the job done in easier games. This is what we've set ourselves up for. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on this game? Uh, what do you think we should do going into the Toronto game? Let me know what we can talk about and discuss, all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for your Atlanta United reviews. See you guys at the last game. Peace out.